From our previous examples and implementations, we already know how to create queues using Java and Spring for RabbitMQ. But is that all and is that the only way to create queues? That's no. We have several ways to implement queues and configure them with Spring and Java. So to take a closer look at it, let's create another configuration class and try to create queues in different ways. So I'm going to create a new class and I'll give the name to my class as RabbitMQ queue configuration. All right. And of course, that class is going to be annotated as a configuration for our purpose. All right. Now, the first and the initial way of creating queues with RabbitMQ using Spring and Java was the bean way of defining the queues. So let's remember that again. We were creating a bean for our queue and we were saying we wanted a queue from, of course, amqp.core and we can provide any name for our method. This is just going to be a reference. So you can just type example queue or anything. And inside the bean, we were returning as the type of the queue. We were saying return new queue. And then we were providing the durability and other arguments for the queue. And for the simplicity, we first provided the name for the queue. And let's say example queue. Yeah, well, we have a typo there. And let's just fix that. And for the second argument, as the durability, we provided false. So this is the very basic and simplest way to create queues using Spring and Java. If we run our application, we would be simply seeing an example queue created inside our RabbitMQ broker. But how about the other ways of creating queues? We have a very useful class for creating queues from AMQP, which is the queue builder. So let's take a look at it right now. I'll just go down below and I'm going to say I need a bean again. And with that bean, I'm going to create a queue. But this time it's going to be in a different way. So I'll say example second queue and inside this method inside this bean i'm going to build a new queue so i'll say return queue builder and you should note that it's coming from amqp.core again and we're now going to use this builder methods to build our queue in a fluent and declarative way. So I want my queue to be durable. I'll provide auto delete. And I can say it is exclusive or not. And I can of course provide arguments in a key value fashion and of course, I can provide multiple arguments as a map of key values and so on. So when I finish declaring my queue in this builder method, I can simply call the build method and say that my queue is ready. Just like that. And of course, for our queue to be built properly, we have to give it a name right here. So for our purpose, I'm going to say example second queue. All right. Now, if we run our application again, we should be seeing that we have two queues, one as the example queue and the second one as the example second queue. 
So let's rerun our application. Our application is starting up. And here we go. And let's go down below to our logs and take a closer look at them. And you should note that we have two different lines this time. We have lines saying auto declaring a non durable auto delete or exclusive queue named as example queue, the one that we annotated, that one that we just created right here. And the second line below that is saying same thing and example second queue as durable true, auto delete true, and exclusive true, and so on. So let's check them out in the RabbitMQ dashboard. All right. And as we can see here, we have example queue and we have example second queue created from our Java code. And if we go inside the example queue, it doesn't have any features and durability. But if we go back and check out the example second queue, it is exclusive, auto delete. We were able to create our queues in two different ways using the declarative APIs of AMQP and Spring. So these are the two most preferred ways of creating queues using Spring and Java. And you can simply create any kind of queue with any arguments that you want using this declarative builder methods.